NASA is a joint project between the Acoustics and Audio Group and the Edinburgh Parallel Computing Centre, both based at the University of Edinburgh. There are 12 of us working across a variety of disciplines, including acoustics, computational physics, audio signal processing, parallel computing, as well as electronic music composition. What we're trying to do, in short, is to push the limits of what it's possible to do in terms of synthetic sound using a computer. Digital sound synthesis has a long history dating back almost 60 years. As you can probably imagine, the earliest algorithms were very much informed by the constraints on the hardware available at the time. One of the earliest synthesis methods is sometimes referred to as wavetable synthesis. In this case, a buffer is filled with one period of a waveform and then read through in a cyclical fashion in order to generate a pitch tone. Another commonly used method in the early days of synthesis involved a Fourier reconstruction of a sound partial by partial. These methods are sometimes referred to as abstract. That is to say, they're based on purely perceptual ideas about how to create a sound. On top of this, at the time, there were all sorts of efficiency considerations that needed to be taken into account. A little later, sampling synthesis appeared. Sampling synthesis is based on assembling a large database of recorded fragments of sound or samples, which can then be cleverly recombined in order to create a full musical instrument. Probably the best examples of sampling synthesis are in the area of piano emulators. These approaches to synthesis are still very popular today, mainly because they run extremely fast on modern hardware. In the case of abstract methods, though, it can become quite difficult to escape from the synthetic character of the sounds that are produced. In the case of sampling, one is very much tied to the original recordings. In the Nest project, in order to sidestep some of the difficulties having to do with sound quality, we make use of approaches based on physical modeling. In this case, we develop a mathematical model of a musical instrument and then simulate it in order to try to emulate some of the subtle nuances of acoustically produced sound. Physical modeling synthesis has been around for a while now. One of the better known methods is sometimes referred to as modal synthesis. In this case, the complex dynamic behavior of a vibrating object, such as a musical instrument, is broken down into contributions from various modes, each of which oscillates at its own natural frequency. Another method is sometimes referred to as digital waveguide synthesis and is well suited to musical instruments whose components can be well modeled in 1D, such as strings or acoustic tubes. In this case, the vibration of the object is broken down into traveling waves, which can be efficiently implemented in terms of digital delay lines. These methods are great and so fast nowadays that it's easy to get them running even on your phone. But there are simplifications underlying these methods, meaning that sometimes it can be difficult to capture the full range of expressivity of an acoustic musical instrument. So, we're interested in going back to basics and trying to make as few simplifications as possible to our musical instrument models. This takes us into the more mainstream world of time-stepping methods. In this case, we'll simulate our system over a grid and then update the solution at an audio sample rate. As you can imagine, trying to compute sound in this way comes with a lot more computational overhead than earlier techniques. And this means that, up until recently, a lot of our algorithms could only operate offline. A big part of the Nest project, then, is devoted to trying to accelerate these algorithms through parallel processing techniques in multi-core and on GPU. The rest of the videos in this series will be devoted to particular special topics, and each will be given by an individual researcher in the Nest project. Reg Harrison will talk about brass instruments and the new software he's developed allowing for flexible, customized construction of all sorts of instruments of brass type, sometimes quite far beyond the familiar instruments of the brass family. Charlotte Devage will talk about new, extremely detailed models of bowed strings, which take into account the bowing mechanism and finger action on the strings in a very detailed way. I'll be back to talk about the closely related problem of guitar synthesis, in particular, the subtle interaction between the player's fingers and the fretboard, and also how to generate sounds such as taps and bar chords. Alberto Torin will talk about his work on percussion instruments, which is unique in that the instruments are highly nonlinear and also fully modeled in 3D. Brian Hamilton will be talking about the problem of room modeling. For physical modeling synthesis purposes, this is important as it allows us a way to fully place our instruments in a virtual space but leads to computational problem sizes which are on the extreme end of things. 
James Perry from the Edinburgh Apparel Computing Center will talk about his work in accelerating our basic prototype codes so that they run as fast as possible. He makes use of parallelization techniques in both multi-core and on GPU, and sometimes both at once. Gordon Delap is a composer of electronic music based at the National University of Ireland in Maynooth and has worked with us since the very beginning. He'll be talking about his particular experience in working with some of our new instruments to create a multi-channel piece of purely synthetic music Ashes to Ashes. NES is a five-year ERC-funded project dedicated to sound synthesis. Oh. 